Hi, everybody. I'm going to give you a lecture on Level 1, Chapter 17, the Stock Soups and Sauces chapter. Okay. Um, this is actually one of my favorite chapters because um, Stock Soups and Sauces is just really the foundation of a lot of our cooking, what, what we do in the kitchen. Um, and so it's really important to know this chapter well if you want to become a good cook. And um, there's a lot of stuff going on with this with this chapter. A lot of the information derives from France and French um, culinary, French cooking. So a lot of the a lot of terms are in French, and we use, as you know, we use a lot of those French terms. Okay. So first of all, let's talk about stocks. Stocks is really the foundation of soups and sauces. Um, sauces. You probably have used stocks before. Some known as broth, chicken broth, beef broth, um, pretty much the same thing, okay? Um, but for any, if you're any kind of good restaurant, then you're making your own stock. And it's important to know the elements of stock, how to make a good stock, how to use stocks correctly. And um, if you used um, all the parts of your food, then you can um, actually use those foods in your stock, okay? So first, um, Talk about stocks. Basically, there's four parts to stock. There's um, liquid, water. Okay, we, we use water for our stocks. Um, the main flavoring ingredient, which would be the bones that make your flavoring your stock, or vegetables if you're making vegetable stock. Um, so we have different options, different animals. We have the ch we have chicken, beef, lamb, pork, um, fish. Okay, so anytime you um, Use some kind of poultry um, is what we call uh, a poultry stock or chicken stock or turkey stock. Okay, um, you can eat beef stock, um, lamb stock, pork stock, all that kind of all those different types of animals. Um, anytime you make a, a fish stock, we call it a fume. I call it a fume. It's kind of a richly flavored um, fish stock. Okay, so. If, Depending on what type of meat you're using, or depending on what type of stock you're going to make. Okay, the other two parts would be the mirepoix, which is onions, carrots, and celery, and what we call the aromatics. Um, you can use different part, types of aromatics. You can use what we call bouquet garni or sachet de spie. And basically, with bouquet garni, the French is back is a bundle of herbs. Um, you just take some herbs, you tie it up to the string, um, and that'll be your aromatics. Or you can use what we call sachet de spie. Which is actually, um, which is basically you take a cheesecloth, you're putting flavoring in the cheesecloth, you wrap it, uh, tie it up the cheesecloth, and you put down your stock for the aromatics. So there's different types. Okay, I got some chicken on the grill that I'm going to check. Okay, I'm back with you. Um, we're talking about stocks. Um, let's talk about mirepoix really quick. Mirepoix is basically onions, carrots, and celery, and the percentages or the ratio is 50%. Um, Onion, 25% carrots, 25% celery. If you're using the mirepoix with onions, carrots, celery in a stock, you really want to put them on a large dice, okay? Um, we talked about bouquet carne and sashti is beef. We'll move on from that. Um, and you can look to see what else you put in those, in the sashti is beef. It's usually peppercorn, sometimes garlic, um, parsley, okay? Um, we talked about stocks a little bit already, uh, the different types. Okay, um, basically there's different ways to pre prepare your bones for stock. It depends on what type of stock you want, okay? A lot of times we blanch our bones to take it the impurities out of the, the stock or the water. So we can get rid of those first, and that's just blanch them in water, and the impurities will come to the top. You do what we call skim, skim it off. You skim it, and then you'll use that, continue using that water for your stock, okay? Um, if you want a more rich stock, you would brown the bones and even brown the mirepoix before you put it in the water, and that just brings out the flavors more. You're basically doing the Maillard process a little bit to start bringing out the different flavors um, of it. Okay. Also, if you want to um, have the flavors released more quickly in a stock, you sweat the bones in mirepoix. Okay. And what that does, it kind of brings out the the flavors of the bones really quick in, in the sweating process. Sweating process, you do it on a low heat. You bring, you slowly bring out the flavors. 
and then you would use obviously put those into the water and you can begin your stock okay um we talked to already about um, the different types of stock and how to prepare it okay when you put your aromatics in you really want to put your aromatics in for about a half an hour to an hour at the most okay that's why you usually tie your aromatics up with a piece of butcher string and you can dip it in and then take it out i usually put in the, the last hour of cooking half an hour of cooking put it in there for the last half an hour hour of cooking take it out and that's flavor. You don't want to put it, put it in there too long because it will really um, put a bad flavor on your stock. Um, same thing if you're doing a bundle of herbs. It's tied up a string. Just pull it out, and you can discard it. Okay. Basically, you should know the ratio of, of water to bones to mirepoix. Okay. Basically, for um, each eight pounds of bones, you have six um, quarts of water. Okay, which would be a gallon and a half of water for each eight pounds of bones um, and one pound of mirepoix. So if you're doing a, for a one pound of mirepoix, you would have a half pound of onions, half, a quarter pound of celery, a quarter pound of carrot to get the right um, ratio of mirepoix in there. Okay. Um, for fish, it's a little bit different. 11 pounds of bones for one, five quarts of stock. And then, of course, vegetable stock, you can look it up, but it's basically four, it's equal ratio, four pounds to one pound to one gallon of water, one pound to one quart of water, okay? Um, moving fat from stock, so basically what you do is you, you need to simmer your stock for about two hours, right, to get all the, the flavors out of the ingredients, and then you would strain it off through a strainer, usually through a, a china cap, okay? And then you can put it through more of a fine strainer to get more of the other impurities out. And you put that into something. You want to cool it off, obviously. You need to cool off your stock from that boiling stage to seven degrees within um, two hours. So you put that in an ice bath. You even put an ice paddle or ice wand in there to cool it off. Okay. And then, of course, you would label it and you would put it in the refrigerator. So the next day when you open it up, What's going to you can see on the top is what we call the wrap. And what's happened is all the fats risen to the top, and it's solidified on the top. Okay, that stuff you take off, you skim off, and has some impurities in it. Okay, you can actually put the, that that liquid piece um, get heated up. All right, and you really you need to taste it and decide. Usually, I you reduce your stock a little bit to get to the flavors you want. You reduce the stock, you boil more of the liquid out, and it's basically um, getting stronger in flavor, okay? So um, definitely move the stock, um, cool the stock off, and you can take the raft off, okay? And then your stock's ready to go. You can use it for different things. You can use it for soups. You can use it for sauces. Um, you can use it for what we call juice lee, which uh, juice lee is actually you're taking, if you're making a roast or something, you're using the juices from the roast, adding some stock to it. That's called juice lee, okay? And so you can make, use different things with it, okay? Um, so that's stocks. Moving on to sauces. Um, you should really know sauces. Um, basically, there's five mother sauces that um, Karam came up with back in his late 17, uh, 1700s, uh, 1700s, the 18th century, okay? There's five what we call mother sauces or grand sauces. There's bechamel, hollandaise, tomato, espanol, and, and um, velouté, okay, I almost forgot velouté, my favorite, okay? And um, you should really know those five basic sauces, okay? And um, the reason they're called mother sauces is because we use those mother sauces, that sauce, to derive a bunch of other sauces, a lot of derivatives um, of those sauces, okay? So you should know, you really need to know each one, um, I mostly use um, bechamel and velouté because I don't deal with a lot of um, meat anymore, a lot of beef, um, just because it's too expensive. And I don't, we do a little bit here in culinary, but not a lot. Um, so basically what a bechamel is, is you're making a roux, which you're going to get to a little bit, and milk. Velouté is basically, it is a, any type of roux with, with, different types of stock. So you can have a chicken velouté, beef velouté, and so on. Okay. A brown or a brown or espanol sauce is 
basically um, you're taking brown stock and a brown roux and you're adding that and that together with tomato sauce okay or tomato some kind of tomato product and um, tomato sauce is basically stock and tomatoes and then hollandaise is a special you guys might have seen that on your eggs benedict and we're using basically emulsion which is a use of eggs yolks as an emulsifier and adding um butter and lemon some kind of oil and lemon to it okay um so there's different types of um derivatives that you should know about the the classic one um would would be um a demi glaze which is the classic beef type of sauce and demi glaze is basically espanol sauce plus and brown stock okay um but you can actually reduce any of them um, to make what you want to, okay? So there's many different derivatives you should know. I'm not going to go into so many derivatives, I'm not gonna go too much into it. Um, basically, um, my favorite derivatives is um, a Supreme sauce, which is a, you take chicken, chicken velouté, you add um, cream to it, and um, that becomes a Supreme sauce. I'm kind of reading on here. Talk about the basic sauce, so basic ingredients of sauces. We talked about roux a little bit. Roux is very important that you know about. There's different types of roux. Basically, which roux is a thickener, and roux is equal parts fat to equal parts flour. So you melt the fat, usually butter would be clarified if butter is best, and you add um, flour to that, and you cook it depending on what type of color of roux you want. You barely cook the flour out if you want a white roux. Okay, so it may not. The, the color of the sauce you're going to use will depend on what type of color of brew you're going to use. So if you want a really nice white sauce, like a white velouté, you would use a white brew. But if you want to start getting more um, stronger flavors, you use a stronger, uh, a more of a cooked brew, which would be a blonde or brown, brown brew. And um, just remember, don't burn your brew because you don't want to burn your butter because then you have an off taste to it. Okay. I have not used too much of the Vermont Bonnet, which is basically you're making little balls of um, roux, right, and putting that in the sauce. I don't use those too much, okay? You, I definitely use slurry a lot, okay? A slurry is basically a combination of cornstarch and cold water, right? And you just make, get some cornstarch, just add enough cold water until it's, it's liquid, but still thick. You guys might have used that in at home and kind of use whatever you know you, i forget what you used as a as a kid to make it kind of looks feels funny okay um a liaison is basically a uh, egg yolk whipped up with hot cream in it and that's what we use when we're trying to thicken um a, another egg yolk type mixture if we put those um oh, if we put those egg yolks by themselves straight into the hot liquid it's going to cook those eggs and turn them into scrambled eggs. So what we do is we try to bring those egg yolks up to um, temperature by turning them into a liaison. And what we do is we take that hot liquid, add that to our whipped egg yolks, and bring those egg yolks to temperature. So you're kind of evening out the temperature between the two products. When you add the egg yolk mixture to the hot liquid, it's not going to cook the eggs. You're going to stir it really quick and it will thicken your liquid. Custard is actually the classic one for that. Okay. Compound butter is awesome. Compound butter is basically a mixture. You take raw butter and you put it in a mixer and you soften it really well and you add whatever flavorings you want. The classic um, maitre d'hotel butter is basically parsley and garlic. Okay. I'm sorry, parsley and lemon juice. I, I put garlic in mine, but the classic one is not garlic. Okay. Um, and you can actually use that. Then you harden it. You roll it up in a in a in a um, in plastic wrap, and you put it in the refrigerator so it hardens, and you cut it into like little discs. And you can put that a lot of times and put it on meats and stuff like that, and then finish cooking. Okay, definitely know what coulis is. Coulis, I should say. Coulis is basically a, a pureed sauce. Could be fruit, could be vegetables. Um, it's usually um, strained through a fine strainer. Okay, to get the pulp out of it. The salsa, you guys know what salsa is, just basically cut up tomatoes and some type of um, 
herbs and spices and fruits. Okay. Um, I don't use it. We talked about the ringing. Oh, let's talk about juice, Julie. We actually talked about Julie already. It's basically you're taking the meat from brown, the juices from brown meats and adding a brown sauce to it and use and use that. Aju is basically you're taking the meat juices from the meat and you're using that um, as as a sauce. Okay, Julie, Aju. Um, what's the other ones you need to know? Talks about the ringing method. I usually don't use the ringing method too much at all. Okay, um, I like using my Shinwa to to um, to go ahead and strain my sauces. Okay. Um, basically, you know, the sauce, if you're picking a sauce, your, your, your sauce is supposed to complement and add moisture to your main clay or your main meat, okay, or your food, okay? It shouldn't disguise the food. It shouldn't cover the food. It's supposed to complement the food. It's supposed to be play a, 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 a secondary role, so to speak. It's your co-star, all right? You don't want to, your co-star doesn't want to outplay your star. So if you're serving this nice chicken right here that I grilled, right? If I'm serving this nice chicken that's got some nice grill marks to it, okay? I just don't want to cover that chicken with sauce and, and throw that beautiful work that I did for the grill marks to make the, the main player of the chicken, right? I might, you know, under sauce that chicken, would put a little sauce on the top of it, let everybody know there's sauce there. And you always want enough sauce for each bite of the product you're using the sauce with, okay? Not too much, not too little. You don't want to like put sauce everywhere, which totally covers the whole plate. You just want just enough sauce for, for each bite the customer can have a little sauce with their bite. Okay. Okay, moving on to soups. Um, basically, two kinds of soups: clear soups and thick soups. Okay. Um, clear soups are any type of brothy soup. Okay, chicken noodle soup, tortilla soup, stuff like that. Any soups that have uh, like a clear broth to them are um, clear soups. Okay, so beef broth, fish, fish broth, fish boule, or chicken broth, or any kind of the broths would be a, a clear soup. Okay, there's something called um, consommé. I couldn't think of the name really quick. Consommé to me names in my head. Consommé is when we're actually taking a broth and we're clarifying as best we can. So it's just nice and clear. It's pretty, pretty um, rich flavor um, and clear soup. Okay, I'm not a big fan of it, but you know, a lot, a lot of restaurants. I mean, I shouldn't say a lot. High end, high scale French restaurants use that. Okay, um, what else? Thick soups. Um, there's basically two types of thick soups. There's something called cream soups and puree soups. Puree soups were actually pureeing. And we're blending up a vegetable in that soup, and we're using the natural thickening properties of the um, vegetable to thicken the soup. Okay, classic example would be butternut squash soup. So we're using a starch and a butternut squash to thicken that soup. Okay. Um, another one would be uh, uh, cream soups. Okay, cream soups. We're usually using some type of roux to thicken those soups. Okay, so that would be the difference. Um, also, cream soups could be known as chowders. Um, it was basically the same thing as cream soups. And um, we're actually using some kind of milk or cream to help thicken that as well. Those are called chowders. Corn chowder, um, clam chowder would be classic, right? Um, using a potato type based soup, cream soup, um, and adding um, clams to it. Okay. Um, so that's basically all of, of that chapter, okay? Um, you should really um, read this chapter and over again. There's a lot of stuff going on. It's going to be on the, on the quiz, okay? So um, if you have any questions, let me know. All right.